Tonight, the long wait is over. After a three-year drought, the Colts are back in the postseason. Chances are, get used to it. A new era is here on RTV6. Showdown in Houston, an RTV6 wild card special. Remember this from the early training camp meeting? Anybody remember that slide that was put up? Oh! That, that's where they had us ranked, right? That's where they had us ranked. What they didn't see from the outside was what we saw from the inside, right? And, man, we did it. We did something only two teams have done in NFL history. Oh, exceeding expectations and now getting ready for the playoffs. The wait's almost over. Playoff time again. Good evening. I'm Dave First. That's Brad Brown. Thanks for joining us tonight. The showdown in Houston. And I get the feeling Colts Nation, especially here in Indy, that they are ready to go this week. Certainly saw a lot of blue being worn around the city yeah. today. A little buzz, a little higher perhaps after they missed the postseason for three straight years. We have a full preview of Saturday's matchup on the way. Here's a look at some of tonight's stories. It's going to be a lot of fun. Adam Benatari is getting another chance at his fifth Super Super Bowl ring. We catch up with the Colts veteran kicker. Darius Leonard has dominated his first season. Just named all pro today. We talked to him about where it all began. Brad's got a chat with Eric Ebron. The Colts tight end has been a great addition for the offense and a special Colts playoff edition of Vic on six. Patriots all-star chimes in about tomorrow's big game, Brad. Well, one year ago, right about now, Andrew Luck found himself on a European adventure of sorts, trying to figure out why his injured shoulder was not getting any better. Fast forward to this first week of 2019, and Luck is the favorite to win the league's comeback player of the year award, a truly stunning return. After missing all of 27, and playing hurt for much of 2016, Luck has put together perhaps his best NFL season yet. Career high marks in completions, attempts, and completion percentage. 39 touchdowns is just one shy of his best season, and nearly 4,600 yards. Only 2014 was better when the Colts went to the AFC Championship game. All along, Luck has talked about how much fun he's been having. Fun in practice, fun in the film room, fun studying, fun on game days. But right now, Luck is all about what's right in front of him. When you're in the weeds, it's hard to sort of flip that switch and zoom out, you know, a little bit and set and, and get a little different perspective and, and appreciate or uh, understand what happens just because you're in it and, and it's like you're on and you don't want to get out of it. But, uh, but I, I, I Again, I'm having fun, and to me, that's the most important thing. And the fact that we, we, we get to go play another game in the playoffs and see what we can do, that's that's stinking awesome. And I think a small part of us understands how, how special it's been so far. Uh, and, and I said this afterward, fulfilling. You know, I feel this season, in a sense, that every game has been fulfilling, but satisfied? No, not at all. Luck had huge numbers in the two regular season games against the Texans, completing two-thirds of his passes. He had 464 yards in that overtime loss back in September and 399 in the Week 14 win at Houston. Six touchdowns, just one turnover. And Luck's record is 6-4 all-time against Houston, 3-2 in games at NRG Stadium. Well, arguably no one spent more time around Andrew Luck during his formative NFL years than Matt Hasselbeck, Andrew's backup for some three seasons, and now he's still spending time with him. An interview earlier this season for NFL Countdown and another one coming tomorrow on ABC's pregame. We welcome our guest tonight, ESPN analyst Matt Hasselbeck, FaceTiming in from parts unknown. We'll put it that way. <laughs> Uh, great to see you, Matt. What, okay, t tell me the difference between Andrew when you were playing and perhaps Andrew in the last 10 games or now. Uh, well, you know, quite honestly, I think he's been tamed and humbled a little bit. You know, being away from the game and um, being injured for a little while, I think has changed the way you see him play. Uh, I remember early on, Clyde Christensen, our quarterback coach, he would always, uh, he'd have this saying, he'd say, listen, less adventure on your throwaways. Like, we don't want you to take so many hits. And Andrew was, you know, sort of bigger, stronger, maybe even just as fast as some of these linebackers or safeties that were hitting him. And so it was kind of like, yeah, 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 I got it. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. Like, these hits don't hurt. I'm, I'm a big, strong guy. Uh, but now I think you see him playing a different style of football, getting the ball out quick, less yeah. adventure on his throwaways. He slides really well now, which uh, is not something he used to do. So um, I think he's playing a lot smarter brand of football. How much of all this, having a, a former quarterback now as a head coach, the influence that Frank Reich has had on him this season? Well, I think Frank Reich uh, doesn't get enough credit for yeah. the, the job of the offensive line. And really what it is is how he calls plays early in a game especially and how he's encouraged 
Andrew to get the ball out on time, throw on time, throw on rhythm, get the ball out. And that's one of the reasons why this offensive line has only given up 18 sacks the entire season, which makes him the best in the NFL at doing that. And so uh, credit goes to Andrew Luck and sure credit goes to the offensive line. But I think Frank Reich and his influence and how he calls games really has a lot to do with it as well. I mean, 18 sacks, that's, I mean, when you were here, there, there were slightly more than that. I mean, heck, if you had 18 sacks, you'd still be playing, right? And my, I said that to Andrew, and he laughed at me. He goes, ah, I think you played long enough. I think you <laughs> squeezed out every inch of uh, athleticism that you had or whatever. So it was a little hurtful, but that's a little how our relationship has been. A little hurtful at times. Definitely funny, though. Hey, how far can this team go in the playoffs? This team could definitely win the AFC. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. They can absolutely win the AFC. And, you know, just because people don't know about their defense or know about the guys, uh, the backup wide receivers or sort of, I should say, the complementary yeah. wide receivers to T.Y. Hilton, that doesn't mean that these guys can't play with the best of them. Yes, there are some teams out there that are more explosive or maybe more consistent, but, uh, you know, just I think to see where this team is right now, the, the head scratcher game for me is the game in Jacksonville when they got shut no out. Question. That's the head scratcher for me. And so I think that this team's not all the way there. And so they could have a game like that at any moment because I don't think that's, you know, they're fully ready to be what they're going to become. But, uh, but at the same time, I know they can beat any, any team in the AFC. And uh, I, th I really do think they've got a great chance this week at, uh, at Houston. Matt Hasselbeck, former Colts quarterback and Colts rack on tour for the better part of three seasons in the Colts locker room. Enjoy the game, Matt. Thanks so much. It'll be a good one. Thank you. Look for Matt tomorrow during pregame coverage. Time for our first break. When we come back, Eric Ebron has transformed his career by landing with the Colts. He is one of the league's top tight ends and has made the Indy offense tough to tame in the red zone. And how is this guy not going to the Pro Bowl? I mean, come on. Another accolade today for the Colts rookie linebacker, but how did it all begin? Truly a maniac on the rise. Darius Leonard with his RTE 6 wild card special. Continue. Some powerful stuff. Only on RTV 6. That's A.J. Vinatieri. Flossing, I believe, is what the kids call it during a recent locker room celebration. His dad, well, he's having a pretty good season as well. Welcome back to Showdown in Houston, getting you set for tomorrow's playoff game down in Houston. And when it comes to playoffs, no one has the experience that Adam Vinatieri does. Tomorrow will mark his 31st playoff game, and the 46-year-old hopes there's many more opportunities to come. I'm jealous of Adam because he can let the beard grow out and, and not hear anything about the gray hair. But if I grow it out like a week, that's all I hear about. I hear about it every single day. Do you know? Oh, absolutely, yeah. What kind of grief do you get? Uh, she's dying for me to shave it. And, keep, and, keep it clean, yeah, by the way. Yeah, there's, pl there's plenty of uh, funny things out on the Internet. Just look around. There's somebody who had uh, a comment and a picture about my rookie year in 1937 or something. Pretty good picture, too. It, it wasn't me, I don't think, but it was good. But you keep this thing going. Uh, here's the thing, though. It's been a while. It's been a couple years since a playoff game. You never know if you're ever going to have that chance again. So I'm going to guess that smile probably hasn't been wiped off your face yet. Right? No, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's hard to make the playoffs, um, and it's been a little while since we've done it, but we, we worked our butt off to get to where we're at, and, and I think everybody's excited about having another week to, to play and preparing for Houston this week. And, you know, they're a good team. They're a great team, but um, we're doing everything we can to try to get this one and be able to continue on. It's, it's, there's something special about playing in the playoffs, and, I mean, that's why we play the yeah. game, you know, to have this opportunity to continue play 31 playoff games though that's that sounds like a lot um, yeah when you look at it that way I guess it is a, a decent amount you know almost two full seasons uh, extra yeah. seasons but um, you know, you get to this point, you know, physically, everybody's a little tired and this and that. You know, everybody's got a little bit of bangs here and there. But you're going on emotion and excitement and, and all that stuff. It all just, I mean, everything else goes yeah. away. It's all, about, it's all about having an opportunity to continue to play. And, and uh, nobody thinks about any of the negative stuff. It's all about how can, we, how can we continue on, how can we win another game and keep going.
one. And the thing is, once you get in, anything can happen. I know it's a cliche, but my goodness, once you get in, okay, Katie, by the door, everybody's got the same record. Let's see what we can do. Uh, absolutely. At this point, I mean, it's the team. I, me personally, I always feel like the team that's hot, that's playing well, that yeah. executes every every, and it's not what you've done the last five weeks or ten weeks or the the whole season. It's what you do this week. Yeah. You know, it's the team that plays air free, mistake free, penalty free, turnover free. All you know, all the little things that add up into wins and losses. You know, it's every game is is different, yeah. but um, the team that, that plays the best that day advances on, and the other one cleaning out their locker. Yeah, the Colts are hot right now, that's for sure. Vinatieri, how about the season he's had, huh? Now number one in career field goals and points scored. It's his 21st season of scoring more than 100 points. Last week, made a 53 yarder just days after his 46th birthday. No question that space in Canton certainly ready for his arrival, Brad. It is indeed, Dave. Eric Ebron's 2019 is off to a fantastic start. His wife, Gabby, gave birth to a baby boy yesterday. This is Aiden Ebron, 7 pounds, 14 ounces. Daddy Eric had quite the first season with the Colts on his way to the Pro Bowl, and now he's ready for more in the playoffs. You generally have the biggest smile on your face of anybody in the locker room. How much have you enjoyed this from um, start to finish? I just enjoy life, and this is for the cherry on top. Um, having these these band of brothers, these this group of men, and we go out there every day and we put it all on the line, and not only to you know play football, but we're succeeding at it and we're having a great year. So. It's been fun. Did you have a sense early on you were going to fit into this offense as well as you have? Um, no. I mean, you just kind of come in here with like an empty notebook, man, and you just kind of, you just kind of fill it up as you go along, if if that makes any sense. So, I just, I just came in here with, with a with a clean slate and just came in here to just dominate. And that was the only thing I wanted to do. I knew that everything else would fall into place. I just wanted to, you know, exert my dominance and show that, you know, I am a playmaker. How has it been having a guy like 12 though to help you fill that notebook, so to speak? Yeah, it's been it's been great. Um, most of my notebook is filled up with his notes, you know. So, it's it's great because you know we I sit right next to him. We, I, I understand what he's thinking, and we've we've had we've had a pretty good connection. And it's only our first year, so I look forward to to being with him for a while. How about having these other guys catching the ball around you that seem to compliment? You guys yeah. seem to compliment each other so yeah, well. Uh, I think we put together a great group, man. Um, and I say we, but I mean it's mainly Chris. I think that he's done a great job. You know, he put he put this team together um, of strong-willed men, and that shows. We were down. We were down 1-5, and we, we ended up making the playoffs. It's ridiculous, but it kind of shows you what kind of people we have in this locker room. Ebron has 13 touchdown catches this season. That is the best among all tight ends in the league. He's also the only tight end to run for a score. For some career perspective, Ebron caught only 11 touchdowns in all of his four seasons in Detroit. That was 56 games. He's certainly ready for more tomorrow night in Houston, Dave. Uh, congratulations to the Ebrons. How about the draft by Colts general manager Chris Ballard last spring? Arguably one of the greatest classes the franchise has ever had, producing not one, but two rookie all pros. We're going to get to Quentin Nelson here in a little bit. But for now, it's all about Darius Leonard. Two brothers in jail, another brother murdered. We know those storylines. Somehow, this young man does not let circumstances divine his destiny. Inside Lucas Oil Stadium, you'll find your fair share of Andrew Luck jerseys, and there's an increasingly large amount of 53, Darius Leonard's jersey. A slight departure from his days when he was at South Carolina State wearing a different number, but still a perfect 10 for the Colts. How much of what happened in South Carolina are you still kind of using here? So man, South Carolina State, man, yeah. I, use, I use a lot of them, man. Just the way what Coach Sachs always told me, my, my linebacker coach there, just go for the ball each play. I, mean, I still do that. He set the all-time school record for tackles before being named the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year. From there, it was off to the combine where the Colts got a look at him to use in the second round of the NFL draft. Deemed by some media as one of the worst picks in the draft, the rookie linebacker completed the regular season with two interceptions, becoming such an integral part of this team winning nine out of ten games. This run you guys are having and the way you're playing and all this uh, and some of the disrespect you've had in your career, what, uh, how proud are you? I mean, I'm very proud. I mean, coming from where I came from, I came from nothing. It's just worth absolutely everything I, I got. I mean, I never, nothing was ever handed to me, and I don't expect nothing to be handed to me, and I'm just going to keep doing everything in my will to prove absolutely everybody wrong that said anything about me, and that's the mentality that I have, and that's the mentality that I'm going to keep. There's been no one in the league like him. Leading the NFL in tackles, including 12 for a loss, 
along with four forced fumbles. A superhero type start, which may go along with the Superman band he's worn since his freshman year in college. That's got some history. Oh, yeah, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> you wear it all the time? All the time. Games or all, the time. all the time. Never take it off. Why Superman? Because, yeah. I mean, like I said, he's he's about like me. Don't have any superpowers, not the fastest, not the strongest, not the biggest, but he beat everybody off his strength. There's uh, one strength, and that's me. It's all special for Darius. Off the field, he and his wife, Kayla, are expecting their first child. On the field, his NFL career is just in its infancy. I get the since you're not done though. No, right? never. I mean, never, never done. There's, my plate is never, never full. I mean, I always want to eat. Always, always ready to learn. So, you never learn too much. Never work on too hard. And with that, it's likely that Luck and Leonard will be around Lucas Oil Stadium for many, many years. The best is yet to come. Yes, sir. Safe to say. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. You just made Colts fans very happy. So. <laughs> yes, sir. Heck of a week for Superman, right? Name AFC's Defensive Player of the Week. Name the AFC's Defensive Player of the Month as well. Then All Pro, that Pro Bowl snub, perhaps water under the bridge now, at least for now. Still to come, the other side of that All Pro news today how Quentin Nelson has helped make the once forgettable offensive line becoming one of the well, one of the best around the NFL. Line of success, plus Victor Oladipo. And this wild card special continues on RTV6. Watch RTV6, working for you. Colts mascot Blue making a couple special deliveries this week, stopping by the offices of both Mayor Hogsett and Governor Holcomb, dropping off some fresh Colts gear for the playoffs. The new t-shirts featuring the team's 1-0 motto. Fans can get posters with that same design around town right now. Welcome back, everyone. Colts GM Chris Ballard made the offensive line a top priority this past offseason. A couple of bold draft picks have paid off in a big way, including an all-pro. If it feels like we've seen this here before, you're not wrong. Dave's got a closer look at the crew keeping Keeping luck clean. It's clear Colts fans enjoy a good offensive line. What other NFL stadium features a prominent photo of a past group in their main concourse? Or better yet, a huge photo of a former right tackle just inside the stadium entryway. I mean, sure, it's from the Peyton era, but but still. You're the lone crossover from the old O-line days. <laughs> I mean, we, got, we got some angry guys on our O-line. You know, there's some of those guys. Angry's good. Though, Angry's right? good, yeah. Those guys in the middle like uh, like to punish people. They like to hit. Um, and it's, it's fun to kind of be a part of an O-line. And that includes the newest member of the line, rookie Quentin Nelson. His play made the team's social media account. <laughs> All in a day's work for where this group is headed. You realize you guys are making this look easy, right? Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. If, if you think that, it's yeah. <laughs> I, Helping lead a line which didn't give up a sack during a span of five games this season, longest run in the league in eight years. All I can promise is that we're going to continue to work as hard as we can. And this man will help see to it. I guess I'm a good coach now. I don't know. I was a bum a month ago. Now I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty good coach. Dave DeGuglielmo is in his 14th NFL season, but his first in Indy. He's watching firsthand the growth, including center Ryan Kelly. He's the most complete center I've ever coached. I, I have no doubt he is the best center in the National Football League. He's the most complete guy. Turn the tape on, find me one better. For Kelly, it's not about being the center of attention as much as it is the entire group getting it. The run game was such a huge factor in our success midway um, through the season. I think we've been really riding that and uh, taking a lot of pride in our work. I think that's that's one of the biggest things that has changed this year, uh, and it's been just a hell of a lot of fun. So as the team has come a long way, so has the group that laid it on the line. And just maybe one day, they'll also get a picture in the stadium hallway. Something's clicking here with this particular group. Right now. Yeah, and I, I think it's more something's clicking with the whole offense. I just think there's there's really become a, <laughs> uh, a quite a brotherhood among those guys. They're playing strong together. You want to get to the point where linemen are excited to run a particular scheme. You know, with the coach, can I let's double team this guy? Let you know they when they come over and they start asking for plays. Now you know you're getting somewhere. Pittsburgh was the only team that threw the ball more than the Colts. That makes Indy's 18 sack total even more impressive. And the Colts have the second youngest line in the league by experience. The only team that's younger, that would be Houston. That line's back intact, though, for tomorrow afternoon. A lot of people looking forward to tomorrow's playoff game. That includes 
Victor Oladipo. Pacers play in Toronto Sunday, which means they'll watch the game from up there. It was just their last season when the All-Star had the chance to bang the anvil. Get the stadium fired up before their game against the Broncos. He's become a big fan of all sports in Central Indiana. The Colts, well, no different. I know earlier this year you had a chance, the team had a chance to honor Anna Vinatieri, who also wears four, baby. Four. Something about four in India, I'm telling you. What is it about four in Indianapolis, man? Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just fits. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you had a chance to watch the team? Do you watch um, the team Sunday? Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Like I told somebody yesterday, this city deserves it. The city just bleeds and breathes sports in general right now. What we can do and what they're doing yes. is sky's the limit. So this city deserves and other city deserves it more. So we just got to keep improving and keep getting better, both them and us. Does any of that surprise you once you arrive here at Indianapolis and realize how much the fan support? It's, I mean, it's universal. Obviously, you no, a little bit of that at yeah, IU. That's why it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, they supported us. They supported the football team. They supported the soccer team. It's, it's just a sports, sports state, really, honestly, especially basketball. So... You know, it's an honor to be able to play for the Pacers yeah. and for this state. Uh, we've had an absolute blast with Vic this season. The season really only just begun. Vic on six all season long only right here on our TV six. Full afternoon of coverage. Here we are coming up tomorrow, two o'clock. It all begins with pregame. ESPN NFL countdown is on the air at three. Kickoff at 435 and then right when the game is done, Join us right back here for live post-game coverage. Big Joe Stasniak joining us here in Big studio. Big Joe! Yeah, 1070 The Fan. We'll hear All from right. Frank Reich, Andrew Luck, and others, and perhaps be looking ahead to a Colts-Chiefs matchup in the divisional round. What do you think tomorrow? Colts. I do, too. I like what the offense did these couple of games against Houston, yeah. and I just think they're on a real roll right now. Deshaun Watson's going to be running for his life Absolutely. tomorrow. Yeah. As he has all season, <laughs> but particularly tomorrow. But. Enjoy the game here tomorrow on RTV6. I'm Brad. Uh, for, you're Brad. Brad Brown. Brown. Day first. first. Hey, we'll see you tonight on the News at 11.